Hey, Fight fans, welcome back to another Top 10 Countdown here on Boxing Legends TV. Well, I'm the greatest, and I'm knocking out all bones. And if you get too small, I'll knock you out. Today, we'll be taking a look at some of the most entertaining boxers in the sport, from the guys who used over-exaggerated defensive moves to others that would do just about anything to make the fans smile. Here are the Top 10 Showboaters in Boxing. Coming in at number 10, we have one of the most crude and insane fighters of all time, El Matador, Ricardo Mayorga. Mayorga had his fair share of achievements in boxing. He is a two-weight world champion and has competed in pay-per-view bouts against some of the biggest stars in modern-day boxing. But that is not what he will be remembered for. He is a madman, a wild animal at times, and he has probably had more fights outside of the ring than he's had inside. His famous arms down approach and his two bouts against the dangerous power puncher Shane Mosley show you what kind of reckless man he is. One, two. <laughs> Look at Mayorga. Fights on. Let me tell you, Mayorga, this gets Mayorga into it. He just let him hit him with a left oh. hand. Look at him. Right hand. And look at Mayorga. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the number nine slot, we have the six foot nine Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. All these heavyweights are shit. You're looking at the savior, me. Fooled you all on that camera. I'm the fucking man. Always have been, always will be. Glitch go, you're getting knocked out, you fucking prick. As far as entertainment goes, Fury is 10 out of 10. He is one of the most confident trash talkers in the game, and so far, he has had the skill set to back up his words, as he's currently undefeated with a record of 25 and 0. If I can't beat him, go nowhere, am I? If I can't hit him one time, knock him clean out. What use am I? He's a bum from Romania who can't speak English. Useless he looks to me. He's got two cross eyes. He looks like he should be in a disabled place. Never mind in a boxing ring with Tyson Fury. No opponent too big or small will stop Tyson from unleashing his war of words before about. And in 2015, he finally got his chance to prove to the world that he is more than just talk. As the greatest heavyweight champion of the last 10 years, Vladimir Klitschko gave him an opportunity to fight for titles. But Tyson wanted to do more than just beat him. He wanted to embarrass him during the build-up and the fight I'm itself. I'm interested in all the titles, all them belts you've got on there. I'm interested in breaking your face in. You're boring. I want to rid you out of the heavyweight division. History does not lie. History says all old champions move over for the new ones. I am the new one. And I don't care about all the fights. I don't care about going down in history. I don't care about being a role model. And I couldn't give a fuck what anybody thinks about me, to be honest. I care about beating you. Since winning the titles, Fury has been diagnosed with some form of mental illness and will have to take some time away from the ring. We here at Boxing Legends wish him a speedy recovery and hope to see him entertaining the fans once again in the near future. Yeah, when you grow a pair of balls, come fight me and I'll relieve you of all them belts and I'll leave that glass chin of yours in, in shackles all over that ring. No introduction needed for number 8. The pound for pound king Floyd Mayweather has made some of the best fighters of this era look like journeymen at times, and he loves nothing more than to gloat about his achievements. My name is Money May, and what I do is get money. And if you don't like me, you don't like your motherfucking self. Because I like to get that king. <laughs> Floyd uses his defensive skills to frustrate his opponents and regularly pulls faces to let them know that they are not on his level. His most recent bout against Andre Berto was a perfect example of Floyd enjoying himself, taunting and showboating his opponent. Get out of me! Get out of me! Get out of me! Oh, I know you did! Mayweather telling Berto to shut up. He gets you so frustrated that you think you finally have him and you end up too anxious to get to the target. Minutes of Floyd Mayweather's career. He's having fun in there now. If this is his last fight, he, I, I guess he's just trying to enjoy these last couple rounds. Whether it's the end or not, Rocky Marciano has company. I do believe Mayweather has coasted to go 49 and 0. At number 7, we have the 1984 Olympic gold medalist and four-weight world champion in the paid ranks, Sweet Pea, Pernell Whitaker. Because Pernell Whitaker is such a terrific fighter that he can be world champions in many different weight categories, including the welterweight division. Arguably one of the greatest lightweights of all time, Whitaker is a master technician in the ring. He took defensive skills to a new level, and sometimes he would do the most insane slips and dodges to show off just how special he really was.
Coming in at number six, we have the speedy modern day great Sugar Ray Leonard. I never said, could I do it? Or is there a possibility I might do it? I always say, if Ray Leonard wants to do something, Ray Leonard can do it. Ray wasn't predominantly known for showboating, as he generally came across as a nice, respectable guy in and out of the ring. But a switch was turned on after suffering his first defeat to the vicious animal Roberto Duran in their first match in 1980. The nature of the loss was very hard for him and his fans to take, and in their rematch, he knew that an average points victory would not be enough to erase the memories of that night in Montreal. So five months later, he went out and avenged it in a way that no one possibly could forget. Him into quitting. I think that Ray Leonard proved in the fights with Duran that he was more than a pretty face. At number five, we have the infamous father and son duo, Chris Eubank Sr. and Jr. You know, I, I have a lot of people who, who say that sometimes in the ring I, I show off a little bit too much, but it's not, there's a difference between showmanship and, show. and, and, and showing off. You know, at the end of the day, it is a fight, but it's also an entertainment business. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta fight, and if you can look good while you're doing it, then, then look good while you're doing <laughs> yeah. it. These two are certainly not ones to shy away from a bit of publicity, so I think they'll appreciate the fact that we listed them together here. Although Chris Jr. is yet to achieve 10% of what his father did, it's already clear to see they share the same ambition for entertaining the fans in the most stylistic way possible. Sr., also known as English, made his name in the 90s wowing fans with his theatrical explosive style. Even though he's made some questionable title defenses in his time, his arrogant fighting style would be displayed against all levels of competition, which I guess is somewhat admirable. His son is starting to knock on the door for the world title level now, and it's yet to be seen if he will continue doing the moonwalk against the top guys. Benny the Golovkin, man. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for your bouts, man. Everyone's scared of you. For some reason, people, people think you're the indestructible man. You're not. And I'm coming. And if I can't get you, Saunders, you are coming as well. You're getting it. Anybody out there with a world title, I'm coming for you. Making his way in at number four, we have the late great legend, Muhammad Ali. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of my critics call. You will struggle to find a single man, woman, or child that hasn't seen or heard of the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Whether it be for his inspirational quotes and poems, or his amazing charity work and peacekeeping missions. Boxing fans will likely remember him for his incredible ring savvy in the 60s. The dancing around the ring was seen as a gimmick at first, and no one could take him seriously, until he faced the Mike Tyson of his day, Sonny Liston, in 1964 and put on a boxing clinic, beating him into submission. That's when people started realizing his style was incredibly effective as he became by far the greatest heavyweight of the decade. His infamous match against Ernie Terrell in 1967 perfectly displays his ring dominance and showboating skill. Taking the number three slot, we have the 90s fighter of the decade, Roy Jones Jr. But um, if I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight and prove that God blessed me with something, I gotta take advantage of that. God gave me some talent and I gotta do this. Unlike others on this list, Roy wasn't the biggest trash talker in the game. He liked to stay clear of media publications and generally kept to himself, enjoying activities like basketball and fishing with friends in his downtime. Looking through the chicken yard, riding the horses, fishing, uh, just hanging with the kids, doing whatever, you know, that's what makes me happy. But when he was in the ring, he turned into a complete showman. His dazzling feet and hand speed separated him from the rest, and he was not one to shy away from the odd bit of showboating. Final seconds of ground four. Oh, you don't know what way he's going. <laughs> the referee doesn't know which way to move. <laughs> Roy's is opening up angles. <laughs> Crowd going wild. He's there. A left hook. A left hook drop for him. He never saw it coming. Big right hand. Oh, he's down from the right hand. Coming in at number two, we have by far the most unknown boxer on the list, the drunken master, Emmanuel Augustus. Having a fairly poor record of 38 wins and 34 losses doesn't really do this amazing entertainer much justice. 
Words can't really describe his style apart from bizarre and hilarious to watch at times. He has shared the ring with many greats, such as Floyd Mayweather Jr., Mickey Ward, and more recently, Ruslan Provodnikov. Essentially coming up short in all of his major bouts, he has to be labeled a journeyman, but can you guys imagine how great it would be if all journeymen fought like this? Before we take a look at number one, here are some honorable mentions. Coming in at number one, we have none other than the dancing master himself, Prince Nassim Ahmed. The showmanship, the vault into the ring, the leopard skin trunks, all of those things made him what he was. People want to be entertained. He was rock star. I was too strong, too fast, and too good, and I'm well checked. Our pick for the number one most entertaining boxer of all time was a quick and easy decision to make. Hamed wanted nothing more than to put smiles on all the faces of boxing fans around the world as he played with his opponents like it was a game of fight night on easy mode. From the moment he entered an arena, the show had begun. His ring entrances were outrageous and completely over the top. Then he would flip over the ropes to begin the action. During the fights, he would often have his hands by his side, slipping punches by mere millimeters, and then he would taunt his opponents after their miss. He also had very dangerous power and could finish a fight with one punch, which he did on many occasions. If you haven't seen a full Nassim Hamed fight, then we strongly advise you do so right after watching this, because quite simply, his whole career is a highlight reel. Watch the uh, use of the shoulder. Working so well, and this is a very confident Ahmed. Now look at this, I think. He's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans. He's playing to the audience, trying to taunt Paul Padillo, who's taking all this. Thanks for watching, Fight Fans. We hope you enjoyed this countdown today. If you did, please remember to smash that like button as it helps out this channel so much and will make us grow so we can keep producing this type of content for you guys. Until next time, this is Boxing Legends TV signing off.